Okay, so now we've got our star impressed in the cuttlefish, and we're just going to see if we can do a cross registration, which means that we're dropping our star shape in to our master mold for the cuttlefish, and then we're book matching it right here, like this, boom. So if we decide we want to put any signatures, there's just a little bit of height left on the back of the part where when I apply pressure, it's going to push into both sides and hopefully give us enough of a register of where the star is when we look at our model. And right now I did not press hard enough, so we're gonna have to make sure that we line up our tops again and just gently rock it back and forth, trying to keep that registration in place. And so I'm pushing it back and forth to see if we can capture that star impression. And so now the camera may not pick it up, but there's a very subtle star that you can see cut into the ribbing. And so I'm gonna use that to create vents that go straight out in the part at the peaks of the star. And then I'm going to gently brush out that textured region so it seats just a little lower. So here's where we're at. And then lining up these top parts parallel, I'm gently making sure that it seats exactly the way it registered before. And you can feel that your cuttlefish locks in. And at this point, it's very important that you have a half round file ready because you're going to hold your part and cut in your registration and I cut my registration in nice and deep to make sure it holds together and you want to go slow enough to where the keratin doesn't just shatter away but gives you something to hold on to and so I'm still holding the whole part together cutting my registration that lovely sound, it's like I have a parrot that wants this cuttlefish. Okay. So we've cut our registration in completely, like so. You can see it's locked in on all four sides. And so while keeping everything together, right, we know that our wire work will be able to be wrapped around this cuttlefish, but we still have to remove our part and then cut a place for the metal to flow in through the funnel directly to our star. So what I'm going to do is just carve away that opening to make a nice funnel shape. And I'm gonna go all the way down to that star opening. And I'm gonna just widen it a little bit at the tip because I want that metal to be able to get all the way in there without issue, okay? The last thing you want is your metal to get to a choke point and then just die out because you didn't give it enough room. We go and just brush that out and then on the opposite side I'm gonna do the same thing because I know where my star tip is and I'm not gonna carve all the way down to the star tip but I'm gonna get very very close because what I want to do is give the cut the molten metal as enough of a chance as much of a chance to stay hot before it fills that void I'm going to take it down as deep as I can, but what I don't want to do is crush that little air vent and not have it allow air to expand. Now, the cuttlefish is porous, so air can travel through it, but it won't happen quickly. So it's not enough to just assume that gravity will do the work for you and you don't have to do anything else. It's always good to incorporate air vents and give nice 
fluid flow to your funnel. I'm gonna be a little more liberal because it's been a hot and humid day. And then there may be some file shaping at that part of the cuttlefish, but that's okay. All right, so now we have our two parts, like so. And what we're gonna do is wire it up. And so what I do is I make sure it's locked into one corner. I leave a little bit to twist. I go around and down and across and then back up. So on one side, you'll have two parallel bands, like so. And on the other side, you'll have an X. And then at that point, I just give it a twist. So it's locked. And then you can grab a piece of flat nose plier, just any old flat nose plier, and just twist your wires so that they bind just a little tighter. You don't want to wrench on this to the point where anything fractures. You just want to hold everything tight. So it's going to be an X with some wiggles and two straight lines. You can leave this on as a handle or you can trim it off. Usually what I'll do is I'll just cut it so it's about, about that long. And then that'll be my handle when I'm done casting.